Okay. Uh, yeah. Thanks for coming to uh, my presentations. Uh, at the beginning of uh, my presentation, I'd like to introduce myself uh, just a little bit. Um, my name is uh, Yoshitake Kobayashi. I usually difficult to pronounce for Western people. Yeah, just call me Yoshi. And when you uh, Google uh, something, you can find easy to find. Uh, I can imagine like this. So this is uh, Yoshi. Um, and this is uh, my, my first time in DevConf, and really exciting um, to do that. And I work, usually work for Toshiba, and I also uh, have a responsibility uh, for the Dev, Dev, Debian ATS project. Um, but uh, for this time, uh, this is uh, my secret identifier uh, for this presentation, because um, I work for civil infrastructure platform, uh, we call a CIP uh, in this presentation. And I'm a CIP, a technical steering committee chair. And this is why I'm presenting uh, this, present, uh, this project. So uh, at the beginning, uh, I would like to uh, describe what is CIP. So uh, CIP is uh, one of the most conservative open source projects that was set by Linux foundations. Linux Foundation actually hosted uh, around 80 projects, uh, but I think that uh, this project is the most conservative one. But I would like to say this is also one of the most important projects for our civilizations. So, I can say our civilization is run by Linux. But this is DevCon. I would like to say our civilization is run by Debian. So, thank you very much for Debian. Uh, there are some uh, examples uh, I can uh, explain. And if you uh, yeah, attended the previous talk um, just before myself, um, you can show a similar um, slide. But uh, we are using uh, Linux for a number of products uh, that relate to transportation and energy power generation, which industrial uses, and also healthcare and broadcasting. So I can say Debian is working on such kind of products. So that means yeah, Debian works well from transportation to energy power plant, uh, turbine control, or industrial communication, and also broadcasting. Uh, this kind of product also, uh, I can say, uh, need to have uh, to run our civilizations. So, a CIP member is uh, very interested in Debian. Why Debian is uh, the most important uh, distribution for us is uh, this is a, yeah, just a similar uh, with other person talking about. But, uh, yeah, we are using Debian for uh, yeah, very critical products uh, for our life. And to make uh, this kind of embedded product, uh, we need to have uh, yeah, more CPU architecture support. But most importantly, importantly uh, we would like to have a uh, yeah, strict license check and also uh, longer term support to survive the, this kind of product for a long term. And we actually already successfully use uh, this kind of uh, Debian uh, for several products. So, but, yeah, I need to tell you uh, something. Uh, there are uh, a lot of issues to be solved. Uh, I can tell you some example yeah, based on the railway system. When we create a yeah, railway system, something like that, so this is a quite old railway system. Yeah. So we created uh, tens of uh, years ago. So, but uh, this kind of systems have to be survived 25 to 50 years. So when we create uh, this kind of railway system, at the beginning, uh, we usually take three to five years to develop that whole systems. In this period, we also uh, take two to four years for customer specific extensions. And finally, uh, yeah, we take a one year 
initial uh, certify, uh, certification and authorizations uh, to deliver this kind of product. And once we uh, deliver this kind of product, sometimes we need to have, uh, have to maintain fixes or something. So in every fix, usually our customer is very conservative and don't want to uh, change a lot. So yeah, if we want to change something, yeah, we need to take three to six months to uh, such safety certifications and authorization again. So this kind of uh, effort uh, depends on the amount of changes. So uh, usually, um, yeah, uh, developer want to ask us, uh, why don't you change color? But we are very difficult to say, no, no, we can't do that. And these kind of systems have to survive 25 to 50 years. So the reason why I said CIP is the most conservative project is we have to consider after my end of life. So the problem we face is uh, the system uh, needs to be support and have to be survived for a very long time. And currently this kind of effort done by each individual company. So each individual company are uh, something like Toshiba or Siemens, Hitachi or something, and that, that kind of company doing uh, individually. So this, is, this kind of effort is huge, very huge. And also uh, we are doing very similar stuff to ensure the inter industrial grade for the uh, infrastructure systems. But in the other hand, now things is very uh, quickly changing. Something like IoT technology or yeah, that kind of technologies. We have to catch up this kind of latest technology trends. So to solve this kind of issues, uh, we consider um, collaboration development can be solved our issues. So we need to have long-term maintenance and also industrial growth. But we are doing similar uh, effort uh, for the Linux and Debian. So if we um, are yeah, doing this kind of effort together, it much makes easier for our life. But to realize this kind of effort, we can't do just by myself, just not in, uh, just inside the CIP. So CIP needs to work with the upstream community because if we fork something a lot, probably a few years later, we cannot manage it again. So to avoid this kind of uh, yeah, uh, forking, yeah, we have to work, uh, we have to consider to work with the upstream community. So, this is a CIP, and this is our solution. So CIP aims to establish an open source base layer of industrial grade software. So again, uh, what is CIP is uh, one of the most conservative open source projects in the Linux Foundation, and CIP aims to provide an open source base layer for CIP-related embedded systems. And also, she uh, works closely with the upstream community. And CIP doesn't or aims to create a new distributions like a data. So, I would like to explain what is an open source base layer. Open source base layer is a minimum set of industrial grade core open source components, software component and tools and methods. So uh, we consider uh, we can share uh, the effort to develop a very common set, a very minimum common set of the uh, open source softwares. For example, uh, kernel and uh, base drivers such as uh, GDBC or BCBox or something. So this kind of minimum set 
can be extended by the uh, distributions. So this is our concept of open source pathway here. And this slide shows some example of minimum package asset for CIP base layer. And this is just an example, but you can see the list is very short. Yeah, that includes uh, kernel and bootloader, and the utility is uh, ZBox, um, GLC, and PUTs, or something like that. So, but uh, yeah, to develop uh, this kind of uh, yeah, for packages, we also need to use um, development packages, uh, such as uh, yeah, flex, flex Bison, something like that. This kind of uh, development package is uh, not just focusing on the maintenance, but we need to keep it for uh, to have a reproducibility. So this is a kind of uh, yeah, our first uh, focusing in the CIP project. But we also have a abstracted development plan. Uh, we have to start as minimized as possible because uh, we have a limited resource, and, but we have a strong interest, in the, especially for kernel and core packages. And then, um, yes, we will things will, will be change based on our requirements. Um, we will extend it again and again, but we have to start at the minimum. So, the following slide, yeah, I'd like to uh, describe yeah, using Debian on civil infrastructure systems. Um, to create a such kind of a, yeah, a product, uh, I think uh, there are no much difference between uh, just embedded uh, Linux development and uh, civil infrastructure. So how we use a Debian for embedded system is uh, we customize a lot for the kernel and each package. Sometimes we have to uh, be minimize the root file system image, and also we have to uh, yeah, optimize the performance for each product. This is why we are customized uh, a lot for the product and then test it. But also we need to um, create a lot of document for open source uh, license compliance and also the export control classifications. So uh, there are a lot of ways to create uh, Debian based uh, images for embedded systems. Um, some of them uh, yeah not uh, believe by Debian developer, but um, yeah, some of them you can do that. So we, uh, the easiest way is just using Debian for target systems. So yeah, we actually are doing in some cases, but most of cases we customize a lot. So using Debian plus limited packages, and some the other cases we cross compile the Debian source code and. Uh, uh, additional source code. So this kind of uh, effort yeah, is done by your CIP members and maybe uh, yeah, done by the other persons. So, yeah, again, I would like to say uh, why uh, we try to uh, use Debian is, uh, yeah, we CIP do not want uh, to reinvent the for you. So, this is why uh, we also are interested in Debian. Um, from now on, uh, let me describe uh, what we are currently doing in the CIP project. So, our scope of activity uh, shows this right. So, we have a um, yeah, development work such as a Linux kernel and the middleware stuff. But we also need to have tools inside the CIP. And after that, we also need to have some, uh, make sure the concept, for example, functional safety or long-term support strategy or something like that. So, yeah, um, we have also very detailed uh, technical topics 
but yeah, I would like to not, not explain so much for this time. So, uh, current uh, activities focusing on three, uh, three items. So, first one is we have to establish a long term support strategy. But uh, to support the long term, we also need to test, uh, test a lot. So, we also need uh, uh, to have a test automation system for our super long term supported kernel. And the last one is uh, real time support. Uh, currently, uh, maybe uh, as you know, so real time support is uh, not uh, part of the uh, mainline kernel, but we should have this kind of uh, yeah, effort uh, function. So, yeah. So, and this is the current status of CIP based development. So, we have a CIP SLTS kernel um, based on the 4.4. Unfortunately, uh, this is uh, not exactly the same as the Debian current versions. Uh, but, uh, yeah, uh, Ben Hutchin is uh, developing our initial uh, CIP kernel maintainer. So, he, yeah, as you know, he's also working for Debian kernel maintainer. And, yeah, we can share the, uh, some information with him. And we also define the kernel maintenance policies, how to survive for more than 10 years. And we already started the maintenance. And the latest CIP kernel is released on the 3rd of July, one month ago. And we also created a testing, a testing framework that's called Border Desk. And we are starting to use uh, this, kind of, uh, this uh, test framework to test uh, Linux super long term support kernel. But the other uh, hand, uh, we also uh, consider to uh, Start, or, or, yeah, start to develop a core packages. But the current status is uh, for core package development is just a bit the beginning. So the following slide I would like to describe uh, the details of the kernel development and also the uh, initial uh, component set developments. Uh, so, the overview of the CIP uh, SLTS kernel is we have two trees. One tree is for, uh, based on the Linux table and maintained by the hatching. And the other one for the uh, CIP SLTS kernel is preempt RT patch. So, and we focus to maintain these uh, two trees for uh, ten, more than 10 years. And this slide shows uh, the uh, yeah, uh, kernel development uh, structures. So as I said, we have two trees. One for SLTS, uh, just normal from the uh, Linux table, and the other one for uh, yeah, CIP SLTS RT. Mm -hmm. And currently, uh, yeah, step, Linux table 4.4 is maintained by Breko Hartman. Um, but uh, after uh, his maintenance is finished, we would like to take over uh, the maintenance. From him, from him, and maintain the original stable kernel as a normal, and also we would like to have uh, uh, additional patches on top of the stable kernel. That is the CIP SLTS kernel. And unfortunately, uh, as I said, uh, CIP SLTS RT is a different branch, and we will maintain uh, for that. But we also do not want to uh, maintain such kind of separate kernel, uh, separated kernel for next time. So we also participate to the uh, real-time Linux project. Yeah, Linux, uh, currently uh, preempt RT part is not mainlined, but uh, real-time Linux project aims to uh, upstream the preempt RT patch. So we would like to work uh, with uh, upstream persons. That's why uh, we uh, joined the real-time Linux project. And we already started to uh, work together uh, with the real-time Linux project. And yeah, it, I hope next uh, CIP SLTS kernel will be have just one branch for that. So, yeah, just skip this. 
So, uh, many yeah, person who knows uh, CIP usually ask when the next CIP garden will be released. So, we usually consider it but not fix our schedule yet. So, we just said, yeah, uh, we are approximately two to three years, so next carnet will be released uh, maybe two years or three years later. But at that time, yeah, we also need to consider uh, synchronize with other effort, something like Debian. So, and after we, um, yeah, changing the next CIP SLTS kernel, we also planning to stop backporting from the upstream. Because a backport from upstream, for example, for five years is not a good solution. So we just focus to the security fixes after we create a new branch. So this is our plan that to have our SLTS kernel inside the CIP project. And the other issue is out of tree drivers. But in general, all out of tree drivers are unsupported by CIP. So, yeah, um, many SOC vendors ask us, yeah, how can we support um, our driver with CIP kernel? We can say, please upstream it first. Then backport it then. then. Or yeah, you can use a CIP kernel with your vendor kernel, but uh, yeah, this is uh, not supported by CIP, but you can support, uh, still you can support uh, with CIP kernel. And it's still, I think, a variable because uh, CIP kernel will be maintained for more than 10 years for security fixes. So this is what, uh, what we are doing, to, I mean, what we have to say. And next topic is a CIP kind of testing. So we have some milestones uh, of CIP kind of testing. The first step is we create the testing environment, which we can share, not only inside the CIP, but also uh, share with uh, anyone. So, and our current status, we, we have already uh, created a uh, uh, environment and we already started the testing. So currently uh, we are also defining uh, what kind of tests have to be done by CIP and how to share the testing results and uh, to make sure any uh, to make sure the regulations or the banks and something like that. So and the goal of CIP testing is uh, yeah, we create, uh, create and publish VM image, which can easy to use. <coughs> and a single developer can use this kind of environment. So uh, we have um, yeah, dem we had a demo at the Open Source Summit <coughs> Japan, but unfortunately this time I uh, cannot bring uh, a lot of stuff. Yeah, but you can uh, easily start to use uh, yeah, our uh, testing environment. So, and the next step is uh, maybe, uh, yeah, just normal. Yeah, we have to extend the test cases and uh, yeah, have to show how it works, uh, how, how it works more or better inside for the CAP kernel. And more update, uh, we are planning to uh, present in the Linux Conference Europe um, in October, yeah, just after two months, uh, yeah, later on. So, um, from now on, yeah, I would like to, uh, to uh, yeah, explain about the CIP core package development. And this is, I think that this is the most uh, related to the Debian, because, um, yeah, we uh, consider four milestones but from one to uh, two, uh, there are huge gaps. So that reason why I make a space from uh, up there is uh, gaps between one and two. So, and to define the component versions, we have to talk 
uh, this community. But um, yeah, anyway, uh, we need to have uh, minimize uh, root file systems for testing. So we started an incubation project uh, for the minimum uh, base system. So this uh, project X, uh, we called project X. And this was in the, this project X, uh, we use a Debian. Um, we use a Debian source code, also Debian binaries with CIP kernel to make our uh, minimum file systems by using a Bitbake or Debian build systems. And output is our yeah, country, uh, we focus to create minimum deployable based systems for testing. And our current status is we have already created uh, some root file systems for uh, variable, uh, variable support, such as the MESA support, and this is uh, one of our um, different sports, and Big Bone Black is also, and the other two is uh, not, uh, not called uh, different sports, but uh, we try to use uh, more uh, boards for testing. So, yeah, this source code is available on the CIP program Project X uh, directory, and uh, it, uh, if you, you are interested in, uh, you can start using that. But, yeah, I can say current status. So current status of the project X is we are using a Debian source code with our CIP kernel source code and cross compile everything. So this is our current status. But to uh, speed up the build, yeah, we also would like to consider uh, to use a Debian preview packages with uh, some yeah customizations. So, yeah, uh, as you can uh, see the last, uh, the previous uh, presentations, yeah, we are interested in using either or Elbe, uh, both uh, projects are uh, using Debian binaries to create uh, root file, customized root file systems. So this kind of effort, uh, we also need, uh, need to consider inside the CIP. So, uh, what's next with Debian and CIP? So, there are many gaps in between the um, yeah, Debian and CIP, and also there are many common goals. So, uh, gaps and common goals, I think this is a chance to work, work together. For example, Debian support term is currently uh, five years, by Debian LTS, but uh, our uh, requirement is usually more than 10 years. But Debian usually supports a uh, whole distribution, which includes uh, more than uh, 60,000 packages now, uh, but our requirement is quite minimal. Current now, uh, current we are, uh, currently, we are focusing on the about uh, 10 plus packages. So, I think uh, we can collaborate to support, to make a longer term support maintenance for limited number of packages. Maybe. And the other one is our uh, build systems. So Debian currently support uh, native build, but uh, I, we also know the uh, Debian cross uh, project is uh, yeah, doing some cross compiling effort. And, yeah, and also uh, Debian try to have a reproducible build this package. And CIP requirement uh, is, uh, yeah, should be reproducible, everything. And also, uh, sometimes need to have cross build. So, this kind of effort also we can provide together. And the uh, third one is open source license compliance. We know that uh, Debian uh, have a good uh, review process uh, inside the Debian legal uh, mailing list. <laughs> and now, uh, based on that review, um, Debian community also moving the uh, file format, a copyright file format, from the uh, something to a dev file format. And dev file is uh, very standardized and easy to uh, machine readable. So our CIP 
requirement is uh, yeah, we try to generate report automatically. So which means uh, dev pipe makes easier to yeah, generate the report. And also uh, yeah, easy to redistribute is our requirement. So if we can share the review results, um, yeah, it makes more variable, I think. So yeah, we'd like to share the ex and exchange uh, license review result. This is a kind of uh, a collaboration point. So I think uh, yeah, this is uh, just uh, some example. But I think uh, yeah, CIP and Debian um, able, uh, have a chance to work together. So this is my concern of uh, Someone said? Sorry. All right. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I'd like to summarize uh, my presentations. Yeah. At first, I can say our civilization is run by Debian. This is the most important point of my uh, presentations. And CIP members are very, uh, have a very uh, huge interest in Debian because uh, Debian's goal is uh, shipping free software with a uh, yeah, good license review. And also, we are already successfully using uh, Debian for several our packages. And uh, we also started an incubation project, which is called Project X. Yeah, this is uh, based on Debian. And there are some gaps and common goals uh, there. And that kind of uh, yeah, stuff becomes a good chance to collaborate. So, yeah, if you uh, want to have more information, yeah, there are some information that I will update uh, upload this right to the website later. And something says, which as a finally we have a, uh, published a white paper. So. <laughs> This is all my presentation. Thank you very much. So, any questions? Uh, the, the, just to make sure that I understood correctly, mm -hmm. there's going to be a subset of packages that are going to be maintained for more than 10 years and that I can build something on. Yeah, uh, that's great. It's yeah. beautiful, mm -hmm. thank you. Yeah. I love it all. It's fantastic news. Seriously, wonderful. Uh, I'll use it. I look forward to that. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, um, any other questions or comments? This is a subset of a long, long, long land time support. It's for specific infrastructure, right? For, for this, some sort of a scenario that you said in the very beginning, where for civil infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess, well, when, when in Debian we have to consider the, the vulnerabilities that are affected for long time support or that kind of things, mm -hmm. we, we consider that the, the vulnerabilities may affect a huge amount of different kind of users. But in your scenario, it's, it's, it's limited, right? So yeah. maybe it makes sense to uh, set what kind of what kind of attack model do you have there? Do you, do you assume that the attacker can be in the local land? Do you assume that uh, the attacker can be sitting in front of the system? Uh, in, if you have an attack model, uh, the, um, it will be easier to establish how critical are the vulnerabilities. And in that case, you will not have you don't have to backport every security patch. Uh, for 20 years. Uh, do you have such a thing like a, like an attack model? You, you, uh, you see what I mean? Okay. Um, yeah, um, currently uh, we are discuss, discussing some, some related on that. So at the beginning, it will be difficult to support everything. So yeah, to make sure uh, which kind of uh, security backport is, will be needed, is, uh, we are also um, Create a set of features which have to be uh, maintained. Yeah. So I think uh, yeah, 
for example, network stack is uh, quite important, but all protocol stack is uh, not interested in all people. So maybe we have to concentrate uh, it's what, uh, what everyone needs to have. Yeah. Yeah, this is our you problem. have some sort of list of priorities. What, what, what features are there? The more critical for you, uh -huh. you, you can just focus, or not just can focus, but at least prioritize those, uh, those vulnerabilities that affect those yeah. parts, right? You will prioritize, but uh, this is under consideration. Yeah. Well, con connected with that, you mentioned also that you have some sort of external or, or independent suite of software for monitoring the system. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what exactly do you monitor? Do you have like intrusion detection systems? What, what, what exactly do you mean by monitoring in terms of security? Okay. Um. So, um, yeah, in this point, yeah, we don't have a uh, concrete decision yet. Yeah. Because that also will define this attacking yeah. model, right? If, yeah. if your monitoring tools mm -hmm. um, uh, mitigate certain kind of attacks, mm -hmm. then if there is a vulnerability that exploits that vector, mm -hmm. you, you can consider it less critical because you have a monitor tool or you have something that mitigates that kind of attack, right? Yeah. yeah. Thanks for comment. So, other comment? Okay, thank you very much. <laughs>